acupuncture has been a huge part of my life for a long time. And I think that more people need to know and experience the life-changing power of acupuncture. In today's episode, I first interview Nikki Osterauer. We start out by talking about her personal health and wellness journey, which started with an eating disorder and has led her to have to pivot her business operations during the spring and summer of 2020. I talked to her about ear seeds and how ear seeds can be a simple way to introduce a little bit of acupuncture in your daily life. After that, I'm going to tell you my story of acupuncture. Let's get to the show. Welcome to the Lindsay Elmore Show, a podcast that helps you find fulfillment amidst chaos. On this show, I interview thought leaders, doctors, creatives, spiritual gurus, and game changers who inspire you to pursue your dreams, overcome obstacles, and leave your mark. Following personal recovery from multiple eating disorders, Nikki Ostrauer opened Now Nutrition in 2008 to help New Yorkers transform their relationship with food. She was driven by an unwavering commitment to holistic wellness, and she believes that long-term health is accessible to anyone who is willing to choose positive, thoughtful eating practices and create better lifestyle choices. She has been featured in publications like Vogue, in Style, Shape, Refinery29, Well and Good, Forbes, The Huffington Post, and Mashable. She has also run corporate workshops for companies like Chobani, Peloton, Hitachi, The Robin Hood Foundation, AstraZeneca, American Express, JP Morgan, and many more. She routinely speaks on panels about nutrition and wellness in New York City and donates her time to wellness in schools in order to educate young minds on how to live a healthier life. Nikki Ostrauer, welcome to the Lindsay Elmore Show. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor. Oh, I'm so excited to talk to you today because you are one of those people who really understands that long-term health is accessible to anyone who's willing to put down the daily routines that it takes to accomplish true health. So give us a little bit of your background and how you came to own your wellness center in the West Village of New York. How did your journey begin down this holistic wellness pathway? Yeah. So it actually all started out with, um, an eating disorder that I had for 17 years. Um, it started out as anorexia when that no longer worked. It was restriction, binging and purging. Um, and I was always functioning through it. So while it was still there in the background, um, I was able to graduate from Binghamton University with a, with a degree in business. I always wanted to move to New York City from Long Island right when I graduated. So I started at a company called Rico, which is selling copiers, printers, and software solutions. <laughs> not health and wellness in any way, shape, or form. Not health and wellness in any way, shape, or form, but they had the most amazing um, training program. And it really taught me all the ins and outs of essentially I was owning my own business within a two block radius in New York City, essentially knocking on doors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I also, because it's sales and your quota resets every single month, it was a grueling 14 hour days, you know, and I just really wasn't taking care of myself. I was taking folks out to dinners and parties and the, the greatest thing about Rico was not only their sales training and business training, I did it for five years, but I also had great health insurance. Mm. I bottomed out there and was able to go into an awesome treatment facility in Arizona where um, I was able to really focus on my recovery for six weeks. Mm. 
And that was the most amazing thing that ever happened to me because what really took me out is I was able to get a lot of recovery in New York. I had my therapist. I was able to put down the binging and purging, but actually what took me out was the night eating syndrome. And so being in a place for six weeks with an amazing team, I was able to come back to New York and I had a game plan, but I couldn't go back to Rico because I just couldn't be back in, you know, the day-to-day grind. And so I just took a year to focus on myself. I took you know, just a regular nine to five job. And after a year, my intuition opened up. I started to get healthy and I decided I wanted to go back to school and study nutrition. So that's exactly what I did. I wanted to, I went back to school so that I can coach others with eating disorders specifically, how, you know, they can transform their lives and live a life full of freedom, ease, and joy. So at first I was doing one-on-one coaching uh, with nutrition, uh, focusing solely on eating disorders. And then, you know, I was starting to get a lot more referrals and inquiries for so much more. So the business started to gradually grow. And that's when I started to take on more nutritionists, but nutritionists who focus on other things, but a similar philosophy. So my philosophy is rooted in mind, body, and spirit, um, you know, because I really feel that true health and wellness can't just be achieved by diet alone. There must be behavioral changes, asking yourself why you're acting out on food in the first place. Even if you don't have an eating disorder, there's just so much um, in mind and body and spirit that also impacts our food choices. So that's actually what made us so successful is that, you know, our program is considered a lifestyle shift and one where, you know, we help you if you have your human moments to regenerate with ease, love, and joy. And then I ended up getting pregnant. Um, So I started the business uh, nutrition counseling in about 2008, and then I got pregnant in 2014, and I thought I was going to love my pregnancy. And the universe works in mysterious ways because I was sick for an entire 42 weeks. And what that taught me was to let go. At that point, I had three nutritionists on staff and I literally told told them, listen, if there's no problems and there's no issues, do not get in touch with me because I'm going to be on my couch trying not to throw up. Yeah. And, but it was the most amazing gift because I got to see that if you have the right people, processes, and structure in place, then anything is possible. Mm -hmm. And so then we had this most amazing, miraculous home birth, um, which was so amazing and delicious. I feel like I earned it. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I had a really crunchy team, which was amazing. And, but then they told me not to introduce the bottle for six weeks. So by the time I introduced the bottle, Emma wanted nothing to do with it. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, and I, and I realize now why, um, I had the excess lipase gene. So, which makes the milk after it's expressed taste like soap. So if you introduce the bottle right away, the baby gets used to mommy's milk from the boob and also expressed milk that tastes a little soapy. So I was literally going to the office, going back to nurse, going back to the office, going home to nurse. And so when that happened, I, I, I always knew that air mask on me first. You know, if, if I take care of myself first, everything else will fall into place. And I learned that in recovery. And what's interesting is that in recovery, I learned so many tools just for living that I use in my daily life. And so every time I would go out to do self-care, I felt like by the time I got there and back home, my Zen was out the window. Why? Because I just felt like some of these services, either the customer service was off, it was too far of a commute, something was always missing for me. So it felt like I was just showing up for a service versus having an experience. So that's when the thought, that's when the um, idea for now wellness, the brick and mortar um, arrived. And I'm like, I need to have all my favorite people, places, and services under one roof. And it has to be in the West Village near where I live. And I want to provide an unparalleled level of customer service, plus build a community where, you know, we're a bunch of like-minded folks who are all hungry for the same thing. And so, um, 
you know, was interesting is that a lot of people thought I was crazy. They're like, Nick, you have a tuna fish budget. Um, and you want the most expensive part of Manhattan and other folks that know me know that if it's meant to be, I'm going to go after it. And so that's when that journey started. And of course, lo and behold, our space on 28th street between fifth and sixth was the last space that we saw. And I just walked in, it was an empty canvas, an empty rectangle. And you just know when you know, just like, you know, you, 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 you know, your partner, you're like, you know, when you know, and so that was it. And I never looked back. I hired the, con you know, the contractor, the architect, and I was able to build the entire place from scratch. So now we offer a whole wide range of services, way more than just nutritionists, but we do have five nutritionists. We all have a different specialty. We have two Reiki practitioners, two infrared saunas with LED light therapy. We have um, food intolerance testing, and we also have a great uh, community space where we've had retreats and panels and pop-ups and sound baths and so much more. And we also have a chiropractor. Amazing. So I want to take you back to, you know, we've talked about addiction on the show and in a lot of ways, eating disorders are a form of addiction. So you mentioned that you got a lot of skill sets that you could apply in your everyday life. So if listeners out there are concerned that they may have an eating disorder or moms listening or starting to see some odd behaviors in their adolescents and teenagers, what tools and tricks did you learn going through that six week process that anyone could apply to craft greater mindfulness around what we're eating on a daily basis? Yeah. And that's a great question. And I, and I think the first thing is the awareness that there is a problem and it no longer works for you. And there's no shame, you know, especially as females, we're so used to beating ourselves up. And I love the saying, break the break out the feather, not the bat, which means, you know, be super gentle with yourself and accept once you can really accept that there is a problem, um, there's always a solution. And so one of the tools that really helped me the most was, okay, number one, letting go of the shame, but two, finding a group of fellows that were going through the same thing. So I joined um, a bunch of eating disorder groups and I remember my mentor encouraged me to get some phone numbers. And I was like, oh, no, they, they don't want to hear my shit. You know, they, uh, you know, I don't want to, mm, I don't want to be annoying. Um, and then my mentor was like, you know what, just try it. And so I'll never forget, I was walking down the street and there was one of my favorite places to go act out. It actually happened to be a frozen yogurt place where I would get like a quart size and I was passing it by and I'm like, do I do it? Do I not do it? Do I do it? And it's like, you have the stocking over your head. You get super anxious. And it was like the gift of the universe. And I had the courage. So I want to encourage everyone to have the courage to either text, text someone, call someone, even if they don't have an eating disorder or addiction themselves, something, someone that you feel comfortable sharing, like I'm not feeling great. I'm committed to not acting out on a symptom, whatever your symptoms are, and just don't move for at least five to 15 to 20 minutes, because it usually takes five to 15 to 20 minutes for a thought or a feeling to pass. Typically, we don't even give ourselves that opportunity. It's like, I want what I want when I want it and give it to me now. Another great tool is, you know, if you're still not comfortable picking up the phone, you know, I always, I subscribe to dailyom.com, which is a daily email and it's a beautiful piece of motivation. And I just read that for the day. And again, I give myself the five to 10 to 15 minutes to allow myself to focus on something positive and spiritual so that it gives my, my body a chance to catch up, to calm down, for the breathing to cool, so then I can think clearly on what the next right action is. Um, so I love that. I also love just grabbing an herbal tea 
and just sitting down and breathing. The three-point breath has been a huge, huge, huge lifesaver. And again, these, these tools can be accessible at any moment. Mm-hmm. Because we're always attached to our phone. And so we can have the daily OM on here. We can have, you know, the person's phone number, but, you know, to always keep those things handy when we're in a good place so that when we're not in a good place, we have um, easy access to it. Yeah, I, I remember. So I, too, struggled with eating disorders. And one of the things that really helped me was when you have that instinct to binge a ton of food or to throw it up after you've binged it, just wait, just wait a moment. Can you come back to the present moment where there is no stress? You know, there is no stress in the present moment. There never is. I mean, there very rarely is. Um, And that I think was very, very helpful for me. And also I think really putting into perspective how you eat, not necessarily what you eat, but how you eat it. Because you could have walked past that ice cream shop, the Froyo place, gotten the pint and realized that that was absolutely the most healthy thing that you could do for yourself in that moment was to indulge in this, but do it with a healthy mindset that allows you to say, okay, well, this is bringing me sheer joy in this moment, but I'm going to have a zillion other moments that are not defined by the food that I, that I am eating. And so when you work with your clients, how do you aim to establish that shift? Because it seems like step one is actually the recognition that you're worth taking care of. And I think a lot of women just aren't there yet. They do not think that they're worth taking care of. So how did you craft, as you put it, your airline mask, put your mask on first before helping someone else? How did you craft that mentality internally? And how do you help people to craft it for themselves? Yeah, that's a great question. And so I, the, the first thing is, is, you know, I always establish trust and they also know that I've been there. It's a safe place. There's never any judgment. So first, when we clear the waves for that, then they feel open sharing and even exploring. I Some clients sit in the chair and they don't even realize how loud their eating disorder voices are right? Until we discover it in this session, because I'll ask them the specific questions, um, you know, how they feel after a meal or how they feel before a meal or how they feel when they're dining out and what are the voices that are coming up. And what's really interesting is that once we can establish what their, I call it ed head, you know, eating disorder head Uh is saying, we work on changing the narrative. So Ed Head is saying, I'm not worthy of, let's just say, eating this meal, or I'm going to feel so much shame, guilt, and remorse after this eating, eating this meal. I'm going to be beating myself up. I'm such a piece of shit. So um, on the line next to it, create a positive affirmation. You know, I am worthy and deserving of a beautiful life. This meal is so nutritious and delicious, and I'm going to savor it and enjoy it and give myself permission to enjoy it with love and to let go of all of those negative thoughts and beliefs. But I also share with them that it's a practice. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to fake it till we make it because they're like, Nick, you know, I'll say those things. And it's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. You know, and I'm like that. And that's. And interesting because that's another Ed head, the ah, uh, whatever, or it. Mm-hmm. And just to keep noticing it and not judging it. That's another important thing. So we go from the negative narrative to the positive narrative and affirmation, and we just keep practicing it as it comes up in real life, which is also another key point. I offer uh, 24-7 support and accountability. 
So if folks are, are, are suffering, I always say suffering is optional. Mm. You can email me at any point and I'll email, I'll email you back within 24 hours and perhaps we can practice those in real life situations in between our sessions mm-hmm. Yeah, as things are coming up. I mean, this again is another principle of addiction is having people that you can rely on that will help you to govern your journey and because I think one of the key things that you have to do with an addiction is you have to put it out there into the world because whether you're an alcoholic or you're addicted to cocaine or you have an eating disorder one of the key problems is the lies that go along with it and as you mentioned it's the lies that you tell to yourself but then you also have to lie to everybody around you about your relationship with food so some people say that eating disorders are actually more difficult to overcome than alcoholism because alcoholism you can never walk in to a liquor store ever again, but you absolutely have to eat and you have to be able to go to the grocery store. So how did you train yourself to learn the foods that were healthy for you and learn the foods that were detrimental for you and how did you shift your perspective so that you, again, realized that you were worth actually eating the foods that made you feel good? Yeah. And again, like another great question, because that too is a work in progress. And I call it, you know, being in the discovery zone of really understanding what's working and what's not working. And personally, I had to have my own team as well. And that's what I, for all of my clients, you know, first of all, I always do an intake just to make sure that we're a good fit, that they don't need a higher level of care if they're working with a therapist, because, because you said the eating disorder thinking, and we have to eat. So it tends to be 24 seven, right? When we have a team behind us and we're practicing the tools regularly throughout the day, that's when we're discovering, right? We're discovering all these new things. It was like, I was a kid again, relearning. I didn't even know what I liked, you know, liked in general, it could have been like hobbies, you know, it was, it was everything relearning. And then, you know, once the mind really started to shift, I really started to build this intuition of my mind connecting to my body to see which foods felt really good in my system how to enjoy foods that may not particularly feel good, but I do enjoy them and how to allow myself to have them with joy. Um, so you keep saying it's a journey and it is, it is a journey and it's one that is a roller coaster. but I always share with my clients, don't worry, we're in this together. You have me in your back pocket. We're going to be holding hands. So you are never alone. And that is one of the key things is I tried to tackle it myself and it didn't work. And I'm not saying, you know, stranger things have happened. Some people can do it on their own and they have great success. I have not found that to be true personally for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do find, you know, especially with myself and clients that the eating disorder is a lot more trickier than alcohol and drugs, mm-hmm. but they each, everything comes along with its challenges, but there's such a beautiful gifts on the other side of recovery. Well, And you have been through an extraordinary set of challenges this year because your wellness center, which was a huge blessing for you as well as your clients, has been closed for, goodness, six months now almost. Mm -hmm. And so you have really had to start thinking about how can I help people 
to maintain control of their health and wellness, even when they can't come to my infrared sauna or they aren't able to do Reiki with someone in person. And one of the things that you have started encouraging is auriculotherapy. Some people call this ear seeding or organocutaneous reflexes that we're engaging with. So tell us what this auriculotherapy is, what were its origins, and how can it be a quick and easy way that people can have a moment to relax, to calm back down, to come back to center, all of the things that we know that we need to do in our daily life, but we definitely need to do if we're looking to support our optimum immunity. So we have offered auricular therapy, the ear seed therapy in the space where practitioners were putting them on our clients. And what was so interesting is because our space is closed, we've had to pivot in many ways. And so one of the ways that we have pivoted was by creating the at home ear seed wellness kits. And actually, uh, we have three different kinds. We have the rainbow, the crystal, and we have 24 karat gold, and we also have invisible. And I never actually thought of doing it. I went to the space to go collect some mail, and I was like, you know what, let me bring home the ear seeds. I really feel like I can use them on myself. And we were, we had a quarantine family in our building, meaning we had two other families that were around Emma's age, Emma's five. And we would all go and congregate on the roof for play dates every day. And so I brought the, the ear seeds upstairs to the roof and I was with the other two moms and we decided that we were going to put ear seeds on each other for stress, anxiety, and libido. Okay. And they all go hand in hand. Nice. <laughs> I like it. And then the kids saw us doing it. And they saw the bling bling. And so we ended up doing it on the kids as well. And we uh, videoed the entire thing. And we got so many DM requests. Where can we buy this? Where can we buy this? So that's why we decided to create the kits. Because it literally takes me no more than five minutes to put these beautiful ear seeds. I have blue ones on. So we created two PDF packets with you know, over a hundred different healing benefits ranging from anxiety, depression, insomnia, back pain, restlessness, digestion, hormone imbalances, fertility, postpartum, kids, addiction. And um, we wanted to make it accessible to the masses as well as affordable. So what actually is acupressure? So ear seeds is actually acupressure on the ear. And acupressure has thought to have been practiced even earlier than acupuncture and may date back as far as 2000 BC. So it works through restoring health by clearing and removing energy balances in the body. So there's over 200 different points in the ear. So depending on what you are dealing with, we provide the ear map and you place the ear seed directly on, the, on those acupressure points. Whatever you do to the left ear, you do to the right ear in order to maintain balance. Also, they're just adhesive. So there's nothing, there's no needles. You just peel, take this off with your, these happen to be the um, invisible ones. See, it took me two seconds. And this is actually called the Shun Min point. And you press it and see, I didn't even, you get so good at it, you don't even need, I don't even need a mirror. But I suggest in the beginning, use a mirror. So for uh, our listeners who can't see, basically what you did was you took a pair of tweezers, you grabbed one of the seeds that has a piece of tape um, on it, and then you went up to the top of the ear, kind of beneath my ear anatomy terms are not that great, but you have the flap that kind of hangs over the top of the ear. And so you're just placing it, is it, is it kind of in that little depression that's there? Yep, right, exactly. And the little depression, the highest pinpoint 
That is one of the most popular points. It's called the Shun Men, also uh, called the Spirit Gate. And um, the point is located, as you said, in the upper part uh, in the triangular shaped valley. Mm -hmm. And it is commonly, uh, it's commonly used to help calm the mind, alleviate stress, anxiety, and insomnia. So there's also the point zero. So where is that and how, and what's the purpose of this point zero? So the point zero is in the little ridgy. Okay. So if you go right in your ear in the middle, you'll see like a ridge. You know what? This is perfect. In that inner, in that inner portion of the ear. Yes. Okay. You see the ridge in the inner portion and that promotes a state of balance. It's also another very common point and very easily um, to access. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So we have that balancing point. So we have the, 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 the Shin Men up top, which is going to help with the mind and the spirit. And then the point zero, what about for people that are just experiencing a ton of stress right now? Yeah. And so, you know, if, if folks are, I'm going to just show you this, if you can see, so this is part of our guide. It's all in color. So excuse the black and white. So it actually shows you exactly what to do for your stress and anxiety and which points to put it on. So it's very specific so that it's not confusing to the end user. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can do this not only for stress, but I'm assuming that you could also use some of these for detoxification. I know a lot of people right now are dealing with weight issues and, you know, it's never a good idea to put on extra weight. And so can we use this for detoxification as well? Yeah. So it's, it's not only great for detoxification um, and folks probably gained weight due to emotional eating and stress and anxiety. So the, the weight loss, in fact, would be the, the acupressure points that we would want to gear towards is for cravings, mm. emotional stress and anxiety, because um, if you're stress eating, it's really about the, sh- the stress and anxiety, which will then impact the cravings. And when you're not stress eating, the body automatically will go into a state of detoxifying and going back to a state of homeostasis. I, I love that. And so, and believe it or not, I actually started my, one, my wellness journey with ear seeds. So it's something I've been doing for more than 10 years now. And so all people have to do is just apply them and then just randomly reach up and kind of press on them throughout the day. Is there some sort of structure that you recommend? You know, just by having them on the little ball is already pressing on the acupressure point. But if you're feeling anxious or you're feeling a craving coming on, you just give it a little press right over here. Um, also if you have headaches, the ear seeds are also great for, you know, this point over here. So the point in between your thumb and your forefinger, that's exactly. kind of soft point there. The yeah. Soft mushy point, put an ear seed over there and then just press. Mm-hmm. And that is great for, um, for headaches and fatigue, you know, standing in, sitting in front of your computer too long. Um, you know, they're, because it presses on the acupressure points, which then relate back to the certain parts of your body, it has a very powerful and therapeutic healing benefit. Mm -hmm. So I encourage folks to to try it out and to be open-minded. It might take two to three times to actually get it. It's just like a new recipe. You know, I know the first time I try a new recipe, it's, it's also presents itself a little bit of anxiety. So it's a little ironic. Um, So it may take one or two tries before you get it right. So have patience with yourself, especially because you're doing it yourself versus have a practitioner do it for you. Mm -hmm. Also, you keep it on for three to five days. You can shower, you can swim. They're not coming off because as you saw Lindsay do, she was, she was cleaning her ear with alcohol ahead of time to get rid of the oils that are on your skin. 
So it helps the adhesive to really stay on there. Mm -hmm. And then after five days, the therapeutic healing, you're complete. Yeah. Take it out. Just, and the way you take it out, just take your finger and pick it off. That's okay. It. But come on, really? Ear seeds? Like they're going to actually have some impact. And so is there real research behind this? I mean, I am a huge fan of like, listen, if humans have been doing it for five to 7,000 years, chances are we, we get it. We understand it. But mm -hmm. What data has come out to actually show that using ear seeds can have real benefits on our health? Well, interestingly enough, actually back in 1990, the World Health Organization, who announced that auricular therapy is probably the most developed and best documented scientifically of all the microsystems of acupuncture and is the most practical and widely used. Oh, wow. Which I thought was really, really powerful. Um, and then also, you know, we can share some links to the group. Um, I have really amazing studies for ear seeds and sleep, ear seeds and addiction, weight loss. Um, the list goes on. I have a, a beautiful list that I can share with your community. So if anyone likes to geek out, it would be perfect for them. Yeah, we need a guest blog, it sounds like, to go along with our show today <laughs> so that we can get all of the all of the information that so many people inherently distrust natural healing modalities. But my thought process is if they didn't work, we would not have maintained them for this many years because that is not the way that evolution works. The um, evolution cuts out that which does not positively impact us. So if anybody is interested in trying out the ear seeds, you can head to now wellness. That's N A O wellness.com. And you can save 10% off of the home wellness kit or the acupressure ear seed kit using the code Elmore 10. And before we go, I would love for you to mention your ongoing support groups, because I think a lot of people are lacking community right now. And so how can people become a greater part of your wellness community? Yeah, this is a, one of the other ways that we've pivoted because we, we used to have a support group that ran every single month for, um, you know, not only our eating disorder clients, but for the entire community. And we have pivoted online uh, to Zoom sessions and they have been so amazing powerful, delicious, and they're filled with such amazing humans. We've opened it up to men and women um, and pretty much everyone because anyone can benefit from an eating disorder support group. And anybody can join those and they are, is it support specifically for a certain disease or disorder or is it just like, a, oh my gosh, let's get around some like-minded people? It's all eating disorders. If you think you have an eating disorder, if you have disordered eating, body image, and there's a beautiful structure so that um, there's always a theme, there's usually a speaker, and then there's um, uh, we leave enough room for participation at the end. Oh, beautiful. I love it. Well, before you go, are you ready for some lightning round questions? Sure. What is your number one strength? Perseverance. What is the thing that you struggle with the most? Sleep. <laughs> well, my next question, what keeps you up at night? Work right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet. I bet. It, it's stressful when you feel like other people are relying on you. And it's... it. It's like we were talking about before we started recording. A lot of the times it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. It's just, you know, it just is like, I don't know the right answer. What am I supposed to do? I, nobody knows right. the right answers right balance. now. I would say what keeps me up is balancing everything. Yeah. Keeping it yeah. all. I mean, you know, moms, I think, have had it the worst, as moms always do. But certainly this year, moms have taken on 
a whole bunch. So what do you hope that people will say about you at your funeral? She lived a whole and complete life that she loved with her family and friends and loved Oh, I love that. If you could give some advice to your younger self, what would it be? That's a good one. Um, Have a little bit more compassion for yourself. Yes. I mean, right now, especially is like, play. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Play. And, you know, even as adults, when we play, we just foster so much creativity and and Mm -hmm. just self-love. I love that. Last but not least, God to you is. Spirit, everything, trust. Well, it has been an absolute honor to talk to you. Everybody go check out www.nowwellness and learn more from Nikki. Join her support support groups and be sure that you are honest with yourself above everyone else about what you need in your life to be fully well. Thank you so much for being on the Lindsay Elmore show. Thank you. Ear seeds are a quick and easy way to introduce a little bit of acupressure into your life without having to go and face the needles of acupuncture. Head on over to nowwellness.com. That's naowellness.com and check out their wide variety of ear seed kits. You can get blinged out with their rainbow crystals or stay low key with the 24 karat gold or stainless steel options. Gently apply your ear seeds to specific points on your ears and then massage them three to five times a day and know that you can use them for days on end. Shower, swim, carry on with your normal activities and change your seeds in about three to five days or when they fall off. Using this acupuncture model can help you to ease physical and emotional imbalances and create greater peace of mind and relaxation. My health and wellness journey did not always go in a straight line. So when I was in pharmacy school, I tore my ACL. And when you tear your ACL, it locks your leg out in a brace. They, you get a brace and it locks your leg out so that you can't effectively bend your knee each and every time that you walk. So one day I was sitting and studying and I realized I couldn't sit on my sitting bones. And that's kind of a problem. I didn't know what it was. I just knew that I could not sit squarely on my bum anymore. So I had a, an insurance plan that covered chiropractor. So I end up at the chiropractor's office and she gets my hips back into alignment. And I happened to mention to her that, Hey doc, I have not slept in a month. And I think I may die. And she said, well, if you haven't slept in a month, you really should go to the acupuncturist. And so I decided to head to the acupuncturist for the first time. And I had no idea what to expect. And what I got was a life changing exposure to health and wellness. I really thought that acupuncture was one of those things that was kind of hooey medicine and like, you know, who knows if it works. And what I found was within one visit, it wasn't like anything life changing had happened, but it set me on a course and a path that became life-changing. The thing I loved about acupuncture was, number one, it exposed me to the fact that there are some dramatically different concepts of health and wellness out there into the world. I was raised by a nurse, and so I was always around allopathic medicine. And because I was always around allopathic medicine, I kind of thought it was the only way to do things. You know, if you have this ill in your body, then you take a medication for it or you have surgery. 
acupuncture opened me up to the basic concepts of Chinese medicine that allowed me a different perspective on health and wellness, that I recognized that Chinese medicine was much more about how do we prevent illness? How do we prevent things from getting so bad that you actually need a pill or that you need surgery? And that was eye-opening for me. And the second thing that I loved about my first interactions with acupuncture was that it wasn't about, okay, you have to do all of these big things all at once. It was about doing lots and lots of small things over the course of time. So in Chinese medicine, the cure for insomnia is dramatically different than in Western medicine. So in Western medicine, what we are taught is do not nap, don't consume caffeine after 4 p.m., be sure that you're setting a set time to go to sleep and that you're rising at the same time each day and that you create cold environments with comfortable bedding and where you feel safe and secure. Those are the basics. And then if that doesn't work, well, then you get sedative hypnotic drugs to help you to fall asleep. But the problem with sedative sedative hypnotic drugs is that they destroy your REM cycles. And so oftentimes you wake up feeling worse than when you first started. So in Chinese medicine, insomnia is considered to be a symptom of liver chi stagnation as well as imbalances in yin and yang. So yin and yang is a concept in Chinese medicine where yin is the inward feminine dark moon lunar energy. Yang is the outward masculine sun energy. So the way that it was explained to me was the reason that we have insomnia is because of the imbalance of yin and yang where we have lots of time throughout our days where it's dark outside but yet we're inside and all the bright lights are on and we're still wide awake even though it's dark outside. There's very little time in our life where it is daylight outside and we intentionally rest and create darkness in our minds. So believe it or not, the first thing that she had me do was commit to taking a nap every day for 75 days. And that is way harder than you may think when you are either in school, working your own business, have lots of kids around, all of those things. It's much more difficult than you would think it would be. And you don't have to full on nap. You can simply rest. But that was part of restoring the balance between yin and yang. The other thing that she had me do was to introduce drinking a shot of some dilute apple cider vinegar in the mornings. That is because in Chinese medicine, each of the organ systems has a taste. And the taste that the liver responds to is sour. So when you take a shot of apple cider vinegar first thing in the morning, it can help to pull push all of the energy out of your liver and into various other portions of your body, helping to reduce the stagnation of the chi or the energy. So with those two simple interventions, as well as coming in and getting acupuncture, shout out to um, the University of California system where acupuncture is, so students that are insured under the school's insurance policies, back when I was going there at least, could get acupuncture as a part of their insured medical services. So I could go to the acupuncturist like 10, 12 times a year for free. And it was amazing. And so fast forward a few years, I've now moved all around and had experiences with multiple acupuncturists working in multiple modalities. And the thing that I've learned the most to love and respect in acupuncturists is how differently they all work. 
So some people are very much into very traditional acupuncture where it's simply about the placement of the needles, but ear seeds are a way that you can introduce a little bit of acupuncture into your daily life. I've had acupuncturists that are much more into herbs and supplements. Other acupuncturists are much more into the Reiki or massage kind of components. If you go to a traditional Chinese clinic, you're going to get a massage that makes you feel like you've just gotten beat up, and but you walk out of the clinic being two inches taller and you feel amazing and lightened and invigorated. And that has helped me as a pharmacist to craft my skills and to understand that part of the medicine is the way that we personally integrate all of our different modalities to create personalized medicine. You know, I I have a lot of different companies and a lot of different brands. And at the heart of all of them is education. And at the heart of all of them is my core belief that there is no one size fits all medicine. And that's why I combine my understanding of multiple different modalities to create personalized education and personalized plans that you can implement in your your life that are different than every every one size fits all like here's the medicine that treats this disease no let's get back down to the core issues what is the root cause of what is causing your problems in your life and how can we approach it perhaps with a little bit of essential oils and a little bit of ayurveda and a little bit of chinese medicine and a little bit of traditional allopathic medicine. Let's combine all of that so that you walk away with the plans that make you feel your best. So whether I'm delivering you education in the Wild Ed Club, in Rasayana Yoga, you can know that my goal is to bring everything from all of my history, from all the different acupuncturists I've worked with, from all the different allopathic docs that I've worked with, all of the different pharmacists who have a slightly different understanding of medicine. And all of that helps me to create personalized plans that can help to empower you. I'm so grateful that I trusted to go to the acupuncturist because it can seem kind of crazy. You're going to lay down and stick in a bunch of needles. But at this point, I've had so much acupuncture in my life that the moment that first needle is placed, I end up in a situation where my body just kind of falls back into it and it understands, okay, this is what we're doing. We're opening these channels. Now's my moment to energetically move things throughout my body. And it's been forever. It's been something I've been forever grateful for. Acupuncture has also introduced me to some of the core healing benefits and the core healing books that have done more to influence my opinions about health and wellness than anything else. One of my acupuncturists introduced me to castor oil packs, and I am so convinced The castor oil packs are a dramatic tool that can help to detoxify your liver. Someone else also introduced me to a book that has done, it it influences me more than any other text that has ever been written about what is my true opinion on health and wellness. It's called Healing with Whole Foods by Paul Pitchford. And what Paul does is so powerful because he takes traditional Chinese medicine and then makes it applicable to a modern diet. So how can we take the concepts of Chinese medicine and introduce them into modern delicious recipes that we want to eat throughout our lives? 
So suffice it to say, I am a big proponent of acupuncture and I love being able to use the ear seeds as a simple way to introduce your acupuncture into your daily life. By the way, if you are looking for someone who can help you to create a personalized way to care for yourself, pop on over to my website, lindsayelmore.com and book an appointment with me. I take one-on-one -on -one clients and one-on-one -on -one patients to help them create their own personalized wellness plan. The Lindsay Elmore Show is written and produced by me, Lindsay Elmore. Show segments are produced by Sue Procco and Kelsey Lorman. Production design, sound design, and editing is by Jive Media. If you have a question about this or any other episode of the podcast, send us an email to hello at lindsayelmoreshow.com. And hey, since you're still here, take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And while you're at it, go over and follow us on Instagram at lindsayelmoreshow. This helps us bring the pod to more people.